Hello, welcome to Train Signal. This is the System Center 2012 Configuration Manager installation lesson in the System Center 2012 Configuration Manager training course. In this lesson, we're going to install this thing. There are some assumptions that we're going to make before we move forward. We're going to assume you followed all the previous guidance that we had in the previous lessons. So SQL Server is configured and ready. There are no firewalls that are running on the hosts. This gets, gets in the way at this point in this process, and we're really interested in learning about Configuration Manager, not about firewalls. And right now, we're not using any PKI. This is all HTTP communication. And without further ado, let's go over to our Configuration Manager environment for Global Mantics and get this process underway. As you can see, we are now on a system named SCCM 2012. We're not going to start at the beginning from what we saw before, though. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to kick off the um, installation or the download of all of the prerequisites that are necessary for Configuration Manager. So I'm going to use that Setup DL tool, and that's located at SMS Setup bin x64 on the Configuration Manager installation media. So I'll just type Setup DL, and you'll get a Configuration Manager Setup Downloader. I'll browse, and we'll go to the C drive, and I'm just going to make a new folder just called CM. That'll be everything I need for Configuration Manager, and you'll see that it's going to download quite a lot of stuff, 41 files in total, but we won't let that get in the way. So I'm just going to minimize that. And the next step is to get the IIS role installed. So to do that, we're going to go to Server Manager. And we'll go back to the beginning and choose Roles. Here we want to add a role. Click Next. And this time we want to do a web server, which is good. We'll hit Next. And next again, it's going to ask us which role services we want. We need static content, default document, directory browsing, HTTP errors, and HTTP redirection. So we'll select HTTP redirection. Under application development, we need ASP.NET. This is going to ask us for some additional required role services, so just click Add Required Role Services. And this selects .NET extensibility. We also need ASP the ISAPI extensions, and the ISAPI filters. Under security, I'm sorry, under health and diagnostics, let's do that next. HTTP logging, logging tools, request monitoring, and tracing. Now on to security. We want basic and Windows authentication both, URL authorization, request filtering, and IP and domain restrictions. In performance, we've already got static content compression, so we'll just keep that selected. And then management tools, we want the IIS Management Console, IIS Management Scripts and Tools. And for IIS 6 component manageability, we need that as well. And we need all four items under IIS 6 management capability, compatibility, I should say. And next, we click Next and then install. And this process takes just a couple of minutes and at the end of it the web server role and all of the requirements that we just associated with the web server role will be installed. But in order to avoid boring you to death I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back in just a minute. And after just a few minutes you can see that our installation process was successful. This is a good thing. There are a couple of additional services that we need here as well and we're going to find those under features. So we'll go to Features, choose Add Features, and we're looking for Remote Differential Compression, first of all, which I'm going to guess is under R. Background Intelligent Transfer Service, this is going to be a way that the system is able to more effectively use bandwidth when, you're, when communicating between sites. And this is one of the ways that Configuration Manager um, leverages some of the Windows features that are available in order to reduce costs for organizations. Background Intelligent Transfer Service is an intelligent way for applications to be able to transfer data over the network and be able to survive restarts and all that other good stuff. And then we have WCF Activation. 
sorry, that's going to be at the top of the list. And we're going to find that under .NET 351, which we need anyway. So we're just going to go ahead and add it as well as everything that's required in order to support the .NET Framework 351, including WCF activation. And once again, WCF activation is a number of set of protocols to make Configuration Manager more efficient. And click Install. And all of this stuff is now going to install just like IIS did earlier. And as you can tell down here, we're still waiting for, oh, it's done, for some of our items to get installed. It was not done just a second ago. I'll just minimize that window. All that you see here is basically a log of everything that was downloaded. So if you see that there's any problems or anything like that, um, you can go through this information and see if there are any issues. You can see file hash check successful, and that's good. We want file hashes to be verified so we know we're downloading files that don't have malware in them. And this process for installing the rest of the prerequisites from the server manager should only take a few more seconds. And once again, we have full success, everything installed exactly as it's supposed to. So things are going well on our journey to getting Configuration Manager up and running. Now, if you want to see what was downloaded as a part of that setup download, uh, setupdl.exe tool, well, let's go to the CM folder that I created over here, and you're going to see a number of things, including .NET Framework 4.0, SQL Server Express, which is actually a pretty big download. We don't need it for our installation because we're using a separate SQL Server, uh, MSXML, and a number of other items. Now, I will tell you that I already have .NET Framework 4.0 installed, and I can show you that. But to install it on your own, you just simply double-click the installer. And that's right here. I also downloaded, separately, the Windows Server Update Services WSUS 3.0 Service Pack to Administrator Console. And I will tell you, I wish Microsoft would have a different name for that. This one you don't actually have to install unless you're going to use the Configuration Manager to do updates. But we're going to be doing that later, so we'll just prep our server now. All we need is the administration console. Right now, we don't even have to configure it. Later on, we'll point the administration console to an WSUS instance that we're going to install later. But for now, we just need the console. Microsoft Report Viewer 2008 Redistributable. We'll get that later. I'm also going to download the report viewer redistributable that it wanted. Not that I can actually type. And we'll save the report viewer file and then run it. And again, that was just to support WSUS. And now, we're ready to install Configuration Manager. I'm going to make the assumption that you already have your uh, installation media in the drive. So I'll do Start and go to Computer. And we'll open up the DVD drive. And you're going to see this will open up a splash screen that will have some options that allow you to get everything up and running. We're interested in the installation, so we're going to click Install. And as you can see, it's going to have a number of pieces of information here. We need to have a supported SQL Server installation, the name of the computer, which we already have, and make sure that everything meets minimum system requirements and that we've read the release notes. We'll click Next to go past this. Here, we're going to install a Configuration Manager primary site. We're not going to use a central administration site in this course because we're just going to be a single site. So we don't need to worry about deploying a central administration site since we won't have multiple sites. Notice if I chose to use typical installation options, it would configure a local SQL server. So that's why we're not going to do that. We want to use our remote SQL server. And click Next. I'm going to install this product in evaluation mode for now. Later on, we can provide a product key that will activate this product so that it will work beyond a 180-day period. 
I'll accept the license terms. If you'd like to read this, please feel free. And because there's other prerequisites that are going to be installed as a part of this process, we need to accept licenses ahead of time. Now, I'm sure that you believe me when I say that I've read these word for word before I click the check marks. So I have, and I'll just click Next. Remember, we just got through doing this setup DL thing. Now, that was something we did ahead of time. We didn't actually have to. We could have done it as a part of the installation. But now, the installation can go a little faster. So I'm going to point the installer to that CM folder that we created, and then click Next. We want to just use English. If you speak any of these other languages, you can go ahead and choose that. But for our server language purposes, English is just fine. So I'll click Next to move on. And once again, for even mobile devices, um, you need to be able to actually, this is, um, yeah, for clients, this is going to be English as well. So we'll just click Next. And notice down here you can do Enable All Languages for Mobile Device Clients. Site code is going to be GM1. Site name is Global Mantics. Again, just like it was in older versions of Configuration Manager, the site code is going to be used to make sure that clients stay in their site, although there will be boundaries and things we create later that actually further delineate where clients go. And we're going to use the default installation folder. One thing that's important, you can't change this after installation. This is it. Once it's set, it's set. And we want to install the Configuration Manager console. We're going to install the primary site as a standalone site. Remember, we do not have a central administration site in this course. This means that we're going to be limited, and that's something that's important to point out. This is it. We cannot later on join this to a central administration site. We're going to provide the server name of SCCM SQL. Instance name is blank because we're going to use the default instance and we're going to use the database name of Configuration Manager GM1. And this is the port that the SQL Services Broker will use for communication. The SMS provider is used by Configuration Manager to communicate with the database and this should be go on one of your site servers because we only have one site server for now. We're just going to choose the current site server that, to which we're installing Configuration Manager. Now, this is one major change in Configuration Manager 2012 that I've mentioned before. Previously, you had a native mode type installation that you could use that would secure communication between clients and server roles. Now, all traffic has moved into a HTTP versus HTTPS communications context. For now, we're going to configure the communications method by role. But if clients have the capability, that is, they have the right certificates, then they'll be able to communicate with the role using HTTPS. Now, we have to have, at a minimum, a management point and a distribution point. And we're going to have this be an HTTP connection for now, as, as per what we saw before. So this is going to say that clients will communicate with these roles using HTTP. And we're going to use the site system that we're uh, installing to as the place to install these points, the management point and the distribution point. I like to join the Customer Experience Improvement Program. This does provide information to Microsoft about how you use the software, but it also helps them gain an understanding for how the software is being used so they can make better enhancements to future versions. So I'll click Next. And now, this is where it all goes great or it goes poorly, and we hope it goes great. This is where you can review the settings that you've selected as a part of this process, and then click Next. And if all goes well, at the end of this, we're going to see lots of green, and we're going to see lots of status messages saying everything went great. At this point, it's doing a check for all of the prerequisites to make sure that everything is in place that needs to be in place. If it doesn't find something, it will use the downloaded files that we downloaded with setup.dl to address the prerequisite issue. And you're going to see that we do have some warnings, and these aren't big deals. And let me just actually mention these, what these are. The security mode is recommended to be operated in only Windows authentication mode on the SQL Server. And this is for security purposes. SQL Server security can be weak and can be broken at times. However, I installed this in mixed mode. It doesn't matter from a pure operational perspective. So the fact is that my SQL Server is installed with Windows authentication enabled. So that's all we really need. 
I did not make any configuration changes to the SQL Server memory usage. So right now, SQL Server can use whatever it wants. And that could cause an out-of-memory issue way down the line. For now, not a big deal. And once again, there needs to be a reserved memory uh, for SQL Server. That wasn't going to be necessary um, for this course, so we skipped that. But if you wanted to, you can configure SQL Server process memory allocation based on the needs for your own organization. Now, with the prerequisites, notice there were no errors. Everything went the way it was supposed to. We got the warnings we were supposed to. So we'll click the Begin Installation, and this is really where the rubber hits the road. At this point, I'm going to pause the video and come back when something interesting happens. And as you can see, we have success. There's lots of green check marks at the left-hand side of the window. And you can see that there were actually quite a few tasks that were undertaken with no errors and no warnings whatsoever throughout the process. This is the sign of a good installation. And it took about 27 minutes and 30 seconds or so. Let's make sure it really worked. If we go to the Start menu, All Programs, Microsoft System Center 2012, we should be able to get into the console with no issues. And there's the console. And that's that. In this lesson, we installed Configuration Manager. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.